Hey what's up guys, it's Aka Milkshake here. Now today in this video, I'm going to be talking about the items you can get in the Core Data Shop. Now they added a lot of stuff as compared to before and I understand that you cannot preview the stats of each of them until you buy it. So to make a more informed decision, I hope this video can give you a better understanding of which equipment you need to prioritize getting first. Do note, I won't be going through everything because there are a lot of equipment, so I'll only go through the more notable ones. Okay, so let's start off with the equipment you should prioritize getting. The first is the Type 93 Pure Oxygen Torpedo. I'm pretty sure you see this everywhere because it's insanely good. It gives a 100 torpedo stat bonus, so if you like face topping, this will pretty much allow you to one-shot enemies. A perfect example is Ayanami. Her already insane torpedo stats plus this torpedo can make her instant kill anybody very easily, especially when you have two of them equipped. Even if they don't die, they will still take an insane amount of damage. But personally, I think that's a bit of an overkill, so I usually have one equipped. It is best to get a number of these, considering how there are quite a number of torpedo-focused ships. Okay, the next item is the Type 1 Piercing Shell. It is the best auxiliary for battleships because it boosts firepower, accuracy, and main gun crit damage. So it's really useful for battleships. Uh, fun fact, these were the armor-piercing shells used by the Yamato-class battleships. So the question is, why are there no Yamato-class battleships yet? Yosta, please give Yamato to us. You already acknowledged her existence in Crosswave, so please, just bring her home. Anyway, let's move on to the next item and that's the Super Heavy Shell. It is an alternative to the White Shell if you want to solely focus on firepower. It has an amazing firepower stat boost of 70 and it does increase main gun crit chance. You can actually pair this with the white shell mentioned before, but I suggest using other equipment like the SG radar or the fire control radar. Regardless, I still think that this is a very good equipment for battleships. The next item is the improved snorkel. Now this gives more oxygen for your submarines so they can fire more torpedoes, which means more damage. This equipment is good to have, but personally, considering how little I use submarines, I wouldn't buy more than 3, with 1 for each submarine in my submarine fleet. The next item is the Swordfish 818 Squad. Now this is an amazing torpedo bomber because that 60% speed reduction is a lot. So since your enemies move slowly, it will be harder for them to dodge your shots, which means it is easier for your ships to land their hits. So this plane is really good against those annoying fast moving enemies. Fun fact, the reason why they reduced the speed of enemies is because they were the ones used by Arc Royale that disabled Bismarck's rudder. The next item is the homing beacon. Now this is a very good item, especially for healing carriers because the faster airstrike cooldown means it is faster for you to get your heals. The reason why it does have a faster airstrike cooldown is because it is based on the British Type 72 DM homing beacon which emits a signal that allows aircrafts to determine the exact location of the carrier so that they can find their way back even if they are under conditions of poor visibility. The next item is the F4U VF-17 Pirate Squad. Now this is arguably the best fighter plane in the game because it does have a good machine gun to deal with enemy aircrafts and the two 500 pound bombs are very good for attacking ships. The increase in anti-air is not just for the carrier but for the entire fleet which is very good especially in World 12. So it's good anti-air plus the good weapons on it makes this plane very worth getting. Fun fact, in naval history, these aircrafts were also called Jolly Rogers and were aboard Bunker Hill, who is only obtainable from the map 13-4. So all the best to those farming for her. Okay, let's move on to the items that you shouldn't prioritize but are good to get. So consider getting them once you get the higher priority equipment mentioned before. The first is the Quad 380mm main gun. Now this is very good if you have John Bud because of her skills. Otherwise, this gun is not that great because it does have a slow reload, mediocre damage and pretty bad accuracy. The next is a rather unusual looking aircraft called the XF-5F Skyrocket. This aircraft does not have any bombs but it does have the fastest takeoff in the game. So it's very good for carriers with launch based triggered skills such as Unicorn but you'll need to decide if it's worth sacrificing their damage on enemy ships since this plane doesn't have any bombs. The next item is the SBD Dauntless. This plane does have similar DPS as the GOAT BTD Destroyer. It is also very nice that it deals more damage to aircraft carriers. However, there are other better dive bombers out there like the SB2C Helldiver, so there is no rush to get the SBD Dauntless. 
The reason why I got it, because it belonged to the actual Enterprise, so getting it would make her more historically accurate in-game, but that's just me. The reason why it does deal more damage against aircraft carriers is because McCluskey from the Enterprise was the one who led the dive bombers during the Battle of Midway that led to the sinking of Japanese aircraft carriers Kaga, Akagi, and Soryu. The next item is the 100-150 Aviation Gasoline. This does give aircrafts more health and it makes them travel faster, which means your aircrafts can take down enemy aircrafts better. I can see its use in PvP more and maybe in other late game chapters. The next item is the TBM-3 Avenger. Now this is a very good anti-submarine plane for light carriers and it allows you to clear submarine bosses very easily with its wide area depth charge. But as of right now, I don't really see a lot of submarine bosses. So there is no rush to get this one, but maybe buy it once you get the other good stuff from the shop. Because who knows when submarine bosses become a huge thing in the future. Fun fact, Warspite Retrofit can also equip this plane, which is very interesting. The next item is the Aichi M6A Seiran. Now this does increase damage by 60% for your submarine carriers, which is actually quite a lot. But so far in this game, I-13 is the only submarine carrier and she's only obtainable from the Inkstain Steel Sakura rerun. So you can buy this if you have her or if you want to use other aviation battleships, considering how very few seaplanes are in the game, so at least this plane does give you more options. Alright, so here are all of my thoughts about the core data equipment. If there are any others that are worth mentioning that I didn't talk about, do share them in the comment section down below so that all of us can learn from each other and enjoy playing this amazing game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do leave a like if you guys did. Subscribe for more awesome content and I'll see you guys in the next video.